Tonight, St. Lucia's Ministry of Health addresses the public health emergency of international concern regarding Ebola. School watchmen are being trained to rise to the present-day security challenges at schools as full-fledged security officers. The intervention should begin with empowering you with additional skills so you can deliver your job even better. And are children now persona non grata at St. Lucia's premier cultural event? You will have your say. Those stories and more are coming up in the Hot 719 News. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovelies and Amy Jason. Good night. It is Tuesday, the 23rd of July, 2019. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. We're on Flow, Channel 117, also being simulcast on KISS FM Radio 105.5 and 105.9. You can also watch on our website. It's www.caribbeanhottv.com or you can join us via our free Caribbean Hot FM mobile app. I'm lovely St. Amy Joseph. Thank you for joining us. On the 17th of July 2019, the World Health Organization declared the ongoing Ebola virus disease outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo a public health emergency of international concern. This means that the situation constitutes a public health risk to other states through the international spread of the disease and that a coordinated international response is required to control further spread of the disease. The current outbreak is considered the second worst Ebola outbreak ever after the West Africa epidemic of 2014 to 2016 and the first known to happen in an active war zone where unstable security amongst other health challenges continue to aggravate the outbreak. What does this mean for St. Lucia? The Vespuna brings us the details of a statement by the Ministry of Health. Following much international concern with respect to the Ebola outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo, St. Lucia's Ministry of Health and Wellness has issued a public statement on the matter. The Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Milene Frederick James, says that the risk of getting a case of Ebola virus in St. Lucia and the region remains very low. In the Caribbean and in St. Lucia, our risk of getting a case of Ebola is extremely low. It is extremely low, but we do know that due to travel, the possibility exists, regardless of how low it may be. Um, though the outbreak continues in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the World Health Organization has indicated that at this point in time, it is not necessary for countries that are far away, such as countries in the Caribbean, to implement excessive screening measures at their ports. Dr. Frederick James has also informed that the World Health Organization deemed it unnecessary to cause any hindrances to trade or travel in the region. She noted that the largest outbreak of Ebola was recorded in 2016 and St. Lucia remained unaffected. The doctor went on to highlight the measures currently being undertaken by the ministry to maintain public health and safety. We have raised the alert, we have informed our stakeholders and we have meetings planned to inform persons at the national level as well. We have a National Health Security Committee which should be meeting very soon to discuss the threat. We have also reactivated our Ebola preparedness plans and will continue sensitizing persons and will also continue monitoring the situation. The Ministry of Health has direct communication with the Pan American Health Organization and the Caribbean Public Health Agency. And we also receive direct information from the World Health Organization through its IHR or International Health Regulations um, Committee as well as the alert system. So we are continuing to monitor the situation and we will keep persons updated. The statement concluded by asking individuals who plan to visit the affected areas within the Democratic Republic of Congo to delay their travels. If plans cannot be delayed until the outbreak is contained, individuals are asked to alert the Ministry of Health so that necessary precautions can be taken. For Hot 7 News, I am Love Spooner reporting. Thank you, Lavey. A number of break-ins at schools across the island over the years made it abundantly clear that the time was right to reassess the security protocol for schools. 
On Monday, the Ministry of Education partnered with the Ministry of National Security for the official opening of the Education Security course. Minister for Education, Dr. Gail Rigobert, called it a joyous day for the school system. I recall very vividly that on assuming this office back in 2016, for some curious reason, Mr. Cole and friends, we were greeted with lots of break-ins. You recall that? For some curious reason. And I had reason to visit many of the affected schools and uh, there was this flurry of activity and uh, raging discourse about the need for proper security in schools. And notwithstanding all the security technology available to us, I felt very strongly that any intervention with respect to enhancing security in schools should begin with you, the officers who are on the front line. You, the watchmen, who sometimes double up as caretakers, who double up as handymen, who double up as drivers, who do all kinds of things, that the intervention should begin with empowering you with additional skills so you can deliver your job even better. Deputy Commissioner of Police Milton Daisy anticipates a transformation in school security following the course training. I would like at the end of the two weeks program when you return that persons shall see that you were a different person. Let persons see that and they can only see that by, by what you do. Okay, and this is how we will know that you have learned, okay, by the changes that take place within yourself and within your activities. The education minister underscored the important role of the school watchmen, dubbing them the unsung heroes of the education system. The education system rests on your shoulders on your shoulders, and that is no small feat. That is no small responsibility. And that is why I want to encourage you to embrace this training opportunity, to come in with fresh and open minds. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force Training School has distinguished itself in this field having trained generations of police officers in our country. You are receiving the best there is to offer on this island. Now, during his remarks, the Deputy Commissioner of Police also made a call for the school security officers to be issued uniforms following the training. He says it will serve to bolster public confidence and boost morale among the various officers across the island. Though Carnival is seen as a time for Bacchanal and is where many choose to let loose, Senator Fortuna Belrose says a standard must be upheld during the festivities. Viral videos depicted some of the unrefined and scandalous behavior from revelers. Countering this behavior, Belrose advocates for a level of mindfulness to persist during the time of revelry. Solange Alfred reports. Sweet St. Lucia Carnival has received stellar praises for its organization and efforts put forth by both the planners and patrons of the event. However, the 2019 display of the National Parade of the Bands was slightly marred by vulgarity and indecency. Senator Fortuna Belrose says a standard must be upheld during cultural events. There were quite a few issues in terms of people's behavior on the ground. You know, um, and carnival has been going on for eons in this country. Um, I think people need to understand now that there's certain criteria, you understand, in terms of self-respect, you know, and how we behave. You know, we, we, we have children looking at us as adults in this society, and we cannot afford to have open sex, you understand, on the streets of Castries when we allow, you know, the, the, the parade 
um, to go on. So we need to be mindful. We need to have some some self-esteem um, and class within ourselves to know that there's a behavior um, for behind the scenes and not in front of, you understand, every Tom, Dick and Harry, and particularly our children who are looking at us, you know, as citizens of this country. Belrose dismisses the notion if the level of crudeness is removed from the festivities, visitors will no longer be interested in what St. Lucia has to offer. I think we have too good a product. Remember, our carnival is just one aspect, you know, of what we offer. We have a beautiful country. We've got beautiful people, hospitable people. So the product is a combination of all of that. I don't think we will lose out if we try to get it right and manage it effectively. She says control measures are in place to correct instances of indecency. However, during mass events, it is easy for a few indiscretions to fall through the cracks. Yes, there are laws for indecency. Um, but again, I think we need to make a point of it, you know, I, because, I mean, yes, the police is there, but clearly they cannot be everywhere. And I think as citizens, we have a responsibility too, you know, um, to, to do what is required of us. Yes, but the law is there. And um, hopefully with the regulations, with the education, our band members, our people who love the carnival can understand what the code of conduct is, you know, before they go out there. Some people just don't know and they just believe it's a free for all. The other aspect of this is that we had a number of persons from overseas who came in, um, you know, to, 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 to participate in the carnival. And I guess a, a lot of them perhaps were under the impression that it was, you know, they were really g going all in, you know. And so I think that's something that we have to be wary of. In some cases, it was not solutions who live here, but it was perhaps solutions who lived abroad, you know, um, who behave in that kind of way. But it's our product. We have to set the standard and the tone. And I think we can do so with education, training, um, you know, and, and a number of things. We, we have to take, take control of it. Belrose says a post-mortem analysis of the carnival season will be carried out and will be forthcoming in September 2019, where areas of opportunity and weaknesses will be assessed in hopes of improving come carnival 2020. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Sula Jalfred. Meanwhile, we took to the streets to hear your views about some of the arguments being made about the level of nudity or lewd behavior during Carnival. Some have argued that Carnival is no longer child-friendly and that as the premier national cultural event on island, this should not be. Others say, keep your children at home and out of the streets when grown-ups are enjoying an experience that they have paid for. So we ask you, is the two-day Carnival Parade of the Bands child friendly here's what you had to say it's not at all i find that there is too much vulgarity there is too much nudity and uh, these lewd acts that we saw being performed on the streets for carnival monday and tuesday all of this needs to be reviewed i thought that there were rules and regulations as agnes francis said concerning the bans but her speaking of uh, getting the amount of persons who are going to be in each band, that is of great importance. Reviewing the types of costumes that are worn by the revelers, that also needs to be looked into as well. And um, what we saw basically, that was a great lack of disrespect not just to the adults but to children and they need to understand children are coming downtown from all different areas of the island and uh, they're coming to watch carnival carnival is supposed to be our culture but what we are seeing today this is not culture at all it needs to be changed and it needs to have a post-mortem done a major postmortem at that to review what carnival really and truly is and what it means concerning St. Lucia's culture. Um, right now, like for this year, when I look at things, the carnival is not children friendly anymore. Yeah, to me, a lot of things change, you know, and it's like, oh my, it's too vulgar for me right now. Like that is not children friendly at all, especially what I saw on TV because I'm not a carnival fan. What I saw on TV, man, that was so crazy, man. Yeah, man, I don't like it. Because, like, majority of the costumes were, like, revealing a lot of the body parts, and they had a lot of children there. And some of the women, they were, like, whining and all of that stuff in front of the children's face, and that's... I mean, y'all can do what you'll do, but...
but not in front of the children's face. And I saw a lot of posts and that can corrupt the children and make them like grow up and become to do the same things. Um, to at least make the costumes more coverage of the body parts and to and so people to have more for them to behave a little better on the streets and not really be all wild and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, you have to enjoy yourself, but not to be all that kind of wild and all that. Stuff. Yeah, the thing is like, the ladies should have been more appropriate, like the part, they should not show it because they have to turn around. They should know better because they're big ladies. The thing is that the carnival I saw, I'm 40 years living out of my country, and I came for the first time to see carnival. And whilst I was looking carnival, the way the people was whining, and the way they dressed to make carnival, it was not good. I did not appreciate it through the children. Because when you have children and you come in and see this type of carnival with children, I feel it very shameful. I was upset. There is my daughter right there. Look, she's there. And I was very ashamed of the way I saw the carnival. Honestly. I, because before when I knew um, carnival, they had nice costume and they students good. But right now, honestly, it's not good. Honestly, but the government was changing. If it's foreigners, other people that come in St. Kusha to do this type of action, they must stop them. Stop them from doing that. Because I saw one, a girl, she bent down, and the boy have his mouth in the bam bam. It was very ugly. Very, very ugly. It was not good. Honestly, I'm telling you. You see the fella I see that kissing the girl backside? I wasn't pleased about that at all at all. As a man and as a woman. It's not a little child. It's big people think that day, you understand? That was nice. I wasn't pleased about that. So costume, well, some of them was nice, but some wasn't good at all. Like, um, how do you call it the place again? Um, that French place, how are we calling it? Not Matthew. Oh, and look, costume, that was very nice. I had liked it. But Lucian costume, some of them wasn't good at all. Some of them, but not all. You're watching the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Stay with us. There's much more coming up after the break.